Welcome to the Purpose-Based Retirement with Certified Financial Planner, Casey Weed. Casey is the president of Howard Bailey Financial. Whatever risk you face during your retirement years, we've got a plan. A published author and radio host. It's not how much we make during the good times, it's how much we keep during those really bad times. His advocacy for retirees and pre-retirees has made him a sought-after speaker and trusted financial leader. And putting a real plan together. This is the Purpose-Based Retirement. Good to see you again. I am Lee Kelso here with Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson, both certified financial planners with Howard Bailey Financial. Well, you know, you may be good with a hammer and a saw around the house, or maybe you're good with a wrench under the hood of the car, but when it comes to investing, DIY guys, kind of like me, well, we're prone to mistakes. So we're going to take a look today at where things can go wrong. Carol from South Bend checks in. She has a question about a required minimum distribution. The problem is she doesn't really want to take it right now, so we're going to take a look at what options she she might have. And we are living in an era of ultra low interest rates. And you may be surprised as Casey looks back through time to just see how low rates truly are. So a lot to talk about today. And as I said, we're going to start with this whole issue of DIY investing. Guys, the tools for the DIY guy have never been better than they are today. Oh, you're not kidding. So how are DIY guys yeah. doing? Is that a good thing to have all those tools that are fingertips? So sometimes I know that it can be more overwhelming than it can really be beneficial to have all those different tools and all those analytics and have no formal education to really know how to utilize those tools for yourself for that matter. Mm -hmm. And what they've found is, especially when it comes to mutual fund investing, Davis Advisors did a study. And Davis Advisors found that the average mutual fund, equity mutual fund, average stock mutual fund from 1991 through 2010 averaged almost 10 percent per year while the average mutual fund investor themselves only averaged 3.8 percent per year over the same period mm. of time due to buying and selling largely at the wrong time and then Vanguard has also done their own studies everybody's very familiar with Vanguard one of the largest mutual fund 401k providers in the world and they also manage portfolios for the people that work with Vanguard.com and and they have found that when they managed their clients' portfolios, which were largely buy and hold portfolios, they on average perform 3% better than those individuals that are managing their own Vanguard funds. And 3% is a huge number when we really think about what the stock market has averaged over the last 15 or 20 years. That is a huge number. And it's something that I think we it really garners our attention, especially as we approach retirement. Sure. Well, you, you hit on one of the reasons there, I'll bet, and that is uh, you're not timing the market correctly. You're in when you should be out, out when you should be in, right? Yeah, that's one of the biggest issues that we that, that you're going to find that has been found to be the biggest downside for investors is timing the market incorrectly. You know, I, I think when we look at the, the market as a whole, the stock market, it's one of those places that, that acts uh, – kind of strangely when we look at the rest of the world, when we see a, a sale at a supermarket or it's it's uh, was it Black Friday after Thanksgiving, everybody runs in and they want to buy everything at, at a good low price. But when it comes to the stock market, they act a little bit more like Isaac Newton when he bought South Sea stocks back in the 1800s, you know, seeing something get more and more expensive and your neighbors and your friends and your doctors getting richer and richer. Now you get that sense of greed and you say, boy, well, now I'm going to buy in. And then you make a little bit of money and then you decide, well, now I'm going to sell because I'm going to get some cash. And then everybody continues to make money. You buy back in and then it falls 20, 30, 40. Sometimes it goes all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. So timing the market at the wrong time, letting our emotions get involved is one of the number of reasons. And number I think that reasons. was the key. The key word that I heard there, Casey, was emotions. And, you know, if we're talking about fixing the the washing machine or changing your own brake pads. Well, we can, Lee, we can pop online and watch a video. And, sure. you know, it's pretty black and white. But when yeah. it comes to the stock market, you're talking about uh, historical valuations. You're talking about different strategies, having a, a setup plan to deal with the ebbs and curves. And what happens is emotions tend to get in the way of those decision making yeah. processes. It's not just failing to time the market, it's failing to have a plan sure. at all, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to ask yourself, do you have a written financial plan? Because that written financial plan can guide you when the market's going up or when, more importantly, it's going down, it can show you where you take your income from if the market's down. It can show you where to take your income from your additional income needs when the market's up and you need additional inflation protection. It can show you where to take your income from if the market's 
concern, you have a health care issue, or we have an emergency. That's what a purpose-based retirement plan is all about, is focusing on creating specific purposes for all of our dollars so that we don't have to worry about this timing the market. We have our liquidity bucket, our income money, our growth dollars, our estate planning dollars, so everything has a purpose and everything's been put in writing. If we don't have it in writing, how do we ever expect to actually accomplish the goals that we laid out in our plan in the first place? And to Marshall's point, I you know, frankly, I'm, gonna, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I've never changed my own oil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my dad never taught me that. Right. Yeah, he taught me finance. Yeah. He, he yeah. taught me business. And he never taught me a thing about how to fix my car or work on my car. And how many of you that are do-it-yourself investors had any formal education on not just how to work on your car, you go seek out a mechanic, but also to work on your health, you go seek out a doctor. If you get into legal trouble, you seek out an attorney. If you run into financial troubles, you should seek out a financial planner. Or if you're trying to navigate retirement, or accumulation or do something with your portfolio, how can you expect to do the best job possible in one of the most dangerous environments that we have, one of the most volatile environments we have in the world we live in today, which is the financial markets? Yeah. I was going to say, I am a do-it-yourself car guy. And, <laughs> I know you and, are. <laughs> and you, you got the better end of the deal. It, was, it would have been far wiser for me to spend time learning finance than what happens under the hood. <laughs> well, I think you made a good point about retirement. Retirement yeah. is just a different set of challenges. You know, it's one thing to do your own investing when you're, when you're young and, and you've got a smaller nest egg to deal with. But once we get to that, through that accumula accumulation stage, we now have this nest egg. Now, how do we navigate all those, those yeah, different the things? The liabilities. But it's okay to still keep and retain a piece of that. If that's something that you really like to do, it's just like Vegas. Don't take the nest egg to Vegas. Take, mm -hmm. a, take what you can afford to lose if yeah. you still want to day trade some yeah, stocks absolutely. on the side. Right? And, and that's why I say all the time, people will come in. I've got friends that will say, hey, Casey, will you manage my life savings? I'll say, well, when are you going to retire? And they'll say, well, probably for 30 years, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, if it's going to be that long, then you absolutely don't need a financial advisor. Or you don't need somebody to, to pay a fee to every single year to manage your life savings because your goals are different. You just need to buy a good low cost index fund and hold on to it and dollar cost average into it over the next 20, 30, 40 years and you'll be perfectly fine. However, it's those individuals that step into retirement and still invest in retirement like they did during 2008 and 2001. Imagine what happens to your life savings. You're five years out from retirement and five years from now you plan on retiring and it takes you 10 years to recover from a major market loss because not only you're doing it yourself, but you're a buy and hold investor. You know, retirement is different than accumulation. It's about protecting that nest egg and making it last the rest of your life. And that takes a lot more planning, a lot more comprehensive planning than it does just trying to grow that nest egg to get to retirement. It takes a lot of special training and knowledge, and that's an opportunity I hope you'll take advantage of today. For the next 10 people who call us right now, we're offering a complimentary review of your entire financial and retirement plan. It's an opportunity to get an education about your money so you can make really the best decisions you can moving forward. So for the next 10 callers, Casey and the team at Howard Bailey will make time on their calendar to visit with you and give you your very own purpose-based retirement. We are back with uh, questions from callers in just a moment. It's your retirement. How will you live it? How will you be remembered? Will you be able to take me on vacation? Will you be there for my ball games? Will you teach me your values? Will you be able to play with me? Oh, help me go to college. How will I remember you? You need a plan for retirement to create the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. The first step is to tune into the Purpose Based Retirement Radio Hour with your hosts, Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson, every Saturday morning at 11 and Sunday afternoon at 1 on 1190 WoWo -Wo and 1075 FM. During the week, uh, Casey and the team get questions. We pull a few of those out and uh, answer those here on the air. And so that's why we have James from Fort Wayne on the line with us today. James, go right ahead. Is it better to do tax withholding on our retirement distributions or just pay it at the end of the year? You know, this is, a, this is one of those questions, Casey. My, my grandfather was one of those folks that hated to withhold. He wanted yeah. to, he didn't want Uncle Sam to keep his, keep his dollars th for the rest of the year, so he wanted to pay at the end of the year, maybe pay, pay quarterly if he had to. Mm -hmm. But James, this is really, really your call. You know, we've got, you've got the ability to, to, some people just want to have it withheld automatically so they don't have to write a check at the end of the year, but uh, if you're somebody that's uh, very diligent and good with your money, maybe you maybe want to withhold and, and pay on your own. Yeah. 
exactly. And you, I have friends that'll say, "Boy, I got I got money back this year." Yeah. Did you get money? The government just hands out free cash, <laughs> or no? That was your money that you right. got back at the end of the year. And again, it's it doesn't matter whether you do the withholding or you don't do the withholding. You're going to end up paying those taxes one way or another. And I find for retirees, you know, retirement's really all about enjoying what you have and and not having to worry about your money. It's not about money. It's about peace of mind during retirement. And when you're in those retirement years and you don't do withholding, and then you file your taxes come April and you end up owning several owing several thousand dollars, that can be a little bit of a headache and it can be a stressor. And for most of the people we work with, we recommend they go ahead and do the withholding out of every one of those paychecks just to simplify their life as much as they can. But we don't want to see you getting a big paycheck back at the end of the year because that means that you didn't have as much spendable income as you could have had during the year. So I hope that helps, James. James, thanks for your uh, question. Let's see, Carol, you're up next. Go right ahead for us. I turned 70 and a half this year and plan to retire later this summer. This is my first required minimum distribution and I don't want to take it because my income is so high. Can I defer it somehow? Well, Carol, you can, uh, and especially because you plan to retire later this year, this might be a good opportunity for you to say not retire this year. You might want to actually continue to work because in your 401k, as long as you're working, if you leave your 401k with your employer, you're still working, you don't have to take a required minimum distribution after the age of 70 and a half as long as you're still working. So that might be something that you want to think about is to say, well, if, we're going to, if I'm going to retire in, say, July or August, Maybe it's worth me continuing to work for a few more months so that I can delay that, uh, that required minimum distribution into the future. Now, if you go ahead and you decide to retire, you're going to have to take a required minimum distribution. When you roll over that 401k, you've now got uh, an RMD, a required minimum distribution that you have to take, not just this year. You could potentially take it next year. So you have the ability to delay it until after the year you turn 70 and a half. However, if you do so, you're going to have to take two distributions in the following following year. Now this is going this is something you should really speak with a tax professional about because it's going to have to come down to your tax brackets. How much taxable income do you have for this year, 2017, what's your taxable income going to be? You might find that it is actually better for you to delay it until next year so that you maintain a tax bracket. It just depends on your taxable income. And then, of course, we can dig into all the different options you have. And I want you to know, more than anything else, you have options. You just need to seek, seek good consultative advice to get those answers. Yeah, one thing I always say, if you don't want that RMD, well, you can gift that away, right? So if Carol's sure. doing some tithing, maybe she just wants to give it to the church and not accept yeah. it in that year. So that's something to be yeah, aware of Yeah, they've made that well. permanent recently in order for you to actually take those distributions. They have to be made directly to the institution, but if you do so, then it never actually hits your uh, your your 1040 at the end of the year. That can be a great way for you to get rid of that uh, distribution if you are charitably inclined. So inclined, yeah. yeah. Nice problem to have. Good for you, Carol. Let's get to Jack over in Warsaw. What's your question today, Jack? Hi, this is Jack. Uh, we wish we would have worked with a fee-based firm from the very beginning, but we bought into Asher Mutual Funds with our current broker. I feel like the fees are just uh, too low to justify moving our funds. How long should we sit tight and hold them? Well, Jack, uh, you know, that's a difficult question, and it's, it's one that I think you want to spend a little bit of time on figuring out what fees you're actually paying today. Because sometimes what we will find is people that actually bought into an A-share mutual fund, they were told when you bought into that mutual fund that, hey, you get to pay me once and you're never going to pay me again. You paid 4 to 6% in that first year, and let's say typically 5%. So you paid 5% the first year, you put 100000 in, you started with 95000 and yes, you only paid that advisor one commission up front, but now you still have ongoing expenses inside of that mutual fund because a mutual fund company has to get paid and you have ongoing expenses when it comes to taxes etc and so all those expenses sometimes will exceed one percent sometimes one and a half two percent a year even after you've paid an upfront load of maybe three percent four percent five percent in the first year you still have ongoing expenses that might be higher than it would be to work with a fee-based fiduciary advisor 
So it may make sense for you to move those assets out of that mutual fund as long as you find a, a, a fee-based firm that's going to charge you reasonable fees for the assets that you're investing. And that's going to be dependent on the amount of money that you're actually investing. So the size of your portfolio should determine what that fee ultimately is that you're paying that financial advisor that you work with. But again, there may be the opportunity for you to get out of those funds, work with a fee-based planner, and not pay any more in fees and expenses. And even if it's marginally more, you may save a lot of money on taxes mm -hmm. because the tax inefficiency of mutual funds, on average, the Wall Street Journal estimates that that's in excess of 1% a year just in tax cost that you may be able to get out of if you're using a separately managed account with a fee-based advisor. You know, Jack's question is very timely because we're seeing a lot of folks come into our office and their advisors are approaching them saying, mm -hmm. hey, we've had you in A-share mutual funds and we can no longer keep you in those, in those funds. We need to move you over to our fee-based platform. Well, oftentimes, Casey, that is actually going to increase those expenses because now you had 1% mutual funds, now you got a 1.5% advisory fee. So this is a great timely question. Yeah. If, you're being, if you're being pitched this or offered this, make sure you take the time to get a second opinion. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I've seen portfolios where people have moved from paying 5% and now they're on an ongoing basis paying less than 1% a year and then they're moved from those mutual funds over to different mutual funds, more mutual funds. They pay taxes in that transaction to get those assets over into that fee-based fiduciary model, as mm -hmm. they call it, and now they've re-diversified them, they've got ETFs, they've got largely mutual funds, so now not only do they have the mutual fund expenses, but they also have the advisory fee on top of it. If you're, like Marshall said, if you're getting approached with that type of pitch, it's time to get a second opinion. Well, here's a chance for you to get another uh, offer, a special offer for the next 10 people. Call us right now. We're offering a complimentary review of your entire financial and retirement plan, an opportunity to learn more about your money because we want you to make the best position decision possible for you and your family moving forward. So for the next 10 people who call 866-482-9559, Casey and the team will make time on the calendar to visit with you and give you your very own purpose-based retirement. All right, here's our question of the day. What was the range of the federal interest rates during World War II? Was it down scrape in the bottom, kind of like we are today, or all the way up to almost 4%? The answer when we come back. Hi, I'm a certified financial planner practitioner. Are you one of the lucky few that will still carry a pension into retirement? Is your company offering you a buyout or a lump sum pension option? If you're seeking independent, unbiased advice from an advisor that can inform you about all of your options, then look no further. You deserve a lifetime of financial confidence due to a lifetime of income. And at Howard Bailey Financial, it's our goal to help you achieve that. If you'd like to see how a CFP professional can best serve you, give us a call today. You need a plan for retirement to create the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. The first step is to tune into the Purpose Based Retirement Radio Hour with your hosts, Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson, every Saturday morning at 11 and Sunday afternoon at 1 on 1190 WoWo and 1075 FM. So our question of the day was, just what were the federal interest rates back during World War II? Was it down near oh, less than 1% or all the way up to 3 to 4%? Casey, which one of those is correct? The answer is B, 1% to 2%, actually 1.85%. So we have seen low interest rates in the past. However, we've never seen them quite as low as they are today. And I know many of you are feeling that if you've got money sitting in the bank, you've got money in savings accounts, checking accounts, money markets, you're trying to buy municipal bonds or corporate bonds. You know, this is a very low interest rate environment that is affecting everyone, especially savers, especially retirees who want to be invested much like my grandparents did in safe or secure investments. Over the last 5,000 years, we've never seen interest rates as low as they are today. The Bank of England, in conjunction with Merrill Lynch, released this to their clients uh, not too long ago, and it illustrated with several different sources, not just several sources, probably hundreds of different sources. It was kind of mind-boggling how they came up with all this data that went over the past 5,000 years, all the way back to 3,000 BC. We can see the interest rates have never been this low. We saw them get pretty low back during World War II, but they've never been this low for such a sustained period of time. All the way back to the days of Mesopotamia and Babylon, we haven't seen interest rates this low, and this presents very unique challenges to investors. And sometimes this backs investors into a corner where they say, you know what I want? I, I want something that's going to do everything. You start looking for the perfect solution. You start looking for what we call the silver bullet. You're looking for a silver bullet that can do all of 
these things. You want to have guaranteed principal, income to last the rest of your life. You want to be able to leave assets behind to the next generation, upside of the market, without the downside. We want the perfect investment vehicle to take us throughout our retirement years. And I'm here to tell you that that just doesn't exist. Not only does it just exist, is many of the people that are stepping into our office will come in with a 401k. Maybe you have all of your investments in a 401k. You've been investing in mutual funds your entire life. And you say, I'm very diversified. Look at all these mutual funds. Well, what do you have? You have everything in mutual funds. So everything is in one place. And what's that one place supposed to take care of? That's supposed to take care of your emergency money, your income, your inflation protection, health care, long-term care needs, and potentially, hopefully, leave assets behind for the next generation. One of the places that is really the antithesis of the purpose-based retirement is a variable annuity. And we've seen these rise in great popularity over the last 15 to 20 years. Why? Because this is the one vehicle that does it all. I have people that'll come in my office, bring in their statements of their variable annuities and say, we can not lose money. We told our advisor we want to be more conservative. We're guaranteed 6% a year. Our income's guaranteed for the rest of our lives. And we get to leave this behind for the next generation. And nine times out of 10, what we find is that individual completely either misunderstood what they were being sold or they were sold something in an improper way. Frankly, they were probably told things that weren't actually true or they told them in a roundabout way. These are very difficult to understand products and this is why if you own a variable annuity or if you have everything in one vehicle, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, life insurance, whatever it is, you must realize that there's a closest distance between two points and that's a straight line and in this low interest rate environment that we have today, we have to be more focused on the financial efficiency of our financial lives than ever before. And in order to do that, we focus on the four purposes your retirement will have, or really the four liabilities you will face during your retirement. Number one is liquidity for emergencies. We need to have funds on hand in case the grandkids get in trouble or the car breaks down or we need to put a new roof on the house. And that emergency fund may need to be larger than it actually was during your working years because now you can't work overtime. You can't put in those extra hours to pay for those major expenses that maybe you took debt on in the past for. Number two is we have to have income that lasts for the rest of our lives. No matter how long you're going to live during your retirement, you're going to need income. If we don't have income, we don't have retirement. If it's a 20-year retirement, a 30-year retirement, some people today are living in retirement longer than they actually spent in their careers. Number three is we need increasing incomes. We need growth for long-term inflation protection. And lastly, whatever's left gets paid into our estate. As long as it doesn't get paid in medical bills, long long-term care expenses, or the biggest portion ends up going to Uncle Sam. So we isolate each one of those four liabilities rather than focusing on the assets like you have for your entire lives. That's what an accumulation planner does. There's two types of investment specialists out there. There's accumulation planners, there's retirement planners. While the accumulation planners focus just on the return on your investment and having enough to get to retirement, and often you hear from these individuals, well, you have $600,000. You only need 6% a year, and you've averaged 7% a year over the last 20 years, that shouldn't be a problem. Then you go, well, what if the market crashes? Where am I going to get my income? What if we have a major health care need? Where are we going to be able to pay for those expenses? The purpose-based retirement. Imagine having a plan that covers all of those liabilities one by one so you can step into retirement confidently. And it's about having the right assets in the right places rather than having everything in one type of investment. If we have liquidity funds, those may go to CDs, money markets, savings, modifying endowment contracts. When it comes to income, that income can be created with investment grade bonds, annuities, dividend portfolios. When it comes to growth, that can be growth for long-term inflation, stocks, options, REITs, MLPs. I put ETC, et cetera, down there because our options for inflation protection are so broad, we can really start to spend a lot of time exploring in order to make sure that income is always keeping pace with inflation. Lastly is legacy for what's left over. That's your estate planning piece. So there's estate planning documents, your life insurance, your long-term care coverage, your final expenses. All of these things help maximize efficiency because we're finding the most efficient vehicle to solve that particular need that you've identified for your retirement years. 
Retirement's about finding a straight line, a straight distance between two points to maximize your efficiency in this low interest rate environment and with the stock market at all time highs. I often liken it to this school bus here, and this is a school bus, but it also looks a lot like a boat. See, my wife and I, we had the opportunity to go on one of these when we were on our first or second anniversary. And when we got on this boat, it had a glass bottom. It took you out into the ocean and the Caribbean. It was beautiful. We got to see the corals and the reefs and the fish, and it was a great experience. However, once we got out on the boat and we were out in the ocean, I started getting a little bored, as wound tight as I am, as you can probably tell. I was getting a little bored in this ship and it's getting a little uncomfortable at the same time. We've got plastic seats or steel bolts in the seats. It's uncomfortable and we're going as fast as we can and we're getting passed by jet skis and boats. Frankly, I think a pontoon could have went faster than we were. Then we finally got back to the, to the, to the land and we started getting a little tour of the island via the bus and we're getting passed by mopeds and we are still going about as fast as we could and we couldn't have been going more than a few miles per hour. You see, we had one vehicle that was trying to accomplish two different things. It was trying to be a car and it was trying to be a boat. You can't expect your mutual funds to provide your income for the rest of your lifetime and keep you up with inflation and be there for emergencies and take care of health care. We have to identify each one of those specific purposes that are unique to you and build a plan customized and designed for your unique future to provide that confidence you deserve. So, okay, lesson learned. Uh, if you're going to vacation with Casey, make sure there's some excitement because oh, it's, it's I not need a lot be... to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I have, uh, let's say that I have one of those big yellow buses in my investment portfolio yeah. right now, what can you do for me? How can you help me understand yeah. how well that's going to meet my needs? Well, in our first meeting, we're really gathering information. And when it comes to breaking those things apart, that's one of the things that I enjoy most about my job is to take the vehicles that people already have and the vehicles that they want and to be able to break them open and explain them in a way that the people we work with can truly understand. And that's, that's where I get the most fulfilled when people walk out of our office and sometimes we never work with those individuals because maybe there's nothing that we can do. Uh -huh. However, they walk out of that office knowing what they actually have for the first time in their lives and how it works. And understanding your financial life as you step into retirement could never be a more important time to understand the financial vehicles that are in your portfolio that are going to take care of you for the rest of your lives. So we started this segment talking about interest rates and let me just see what you're thinking is along those lines. All of us who do count on fixed income kind of uh, returns. What do you see happening? Are we, are interest rates are trending up? Or do we think that's going to yeah. keep going up the line or is it going to level out? Well, if we look at the history of interest rates, if we go back to the Great Depression, last time interest rates were this low, uh, the long term average of interest rates is about 3.5% per year over the last 100 years. And it took 34 years to get from 0% back to just that average of 3.5%. Now, I know and I recognize that investors have been suffering for the last eight years at negative to right. zero interest rates, but there are things that we can do today because it's going to take a lot more time than you may recognize. All the more reason it's important that you're one of the next 10 callers right now to uh, take us up on an offer for a complimentary financial review of your entire financial and retirement plan, an opportunity to learn more about your money so that you can make the best decision possible going forward. So for the next 10 callers, Casey and the team will make some time on the calendar to visit you and give you your very own purpose-based retirement. Please make that call.